Axe likes this very much. Welcome to Coffee with, with, with Hoppies, Hoppies, Hoppies. Let's do this! Good evening, friends, family, viewers, and everyone else who happens to be involved tonight. Welcome back to a new episode of Coffee with Toffees. My name is, as always, Toffees, and I am glad that you chose to spend your evening or morning or afternoon because VODs are everything nowadays, hanging out with us. I do want to give a big shout out before we start here today to those who make it possible, uh, Asus and Razor for the equipment that we're making the show on, and Unicorn, our brand new partner for coming on, uh, creating some new overlays, and uh, honestly helping me get motivated again to start putting shows back up because I like to do it and needed a little bit of help producing, and uh, they said that they would love to do that. So uh, for those of you who don't know, they are a betting site, but I... Definitely, it was very careful. I like to make sure that everything's up and up so they're regulated, safe, and nobody underage can get anywhere near betting on their platform. Um, I went ahead and verified and even tried it out myself. So uh, thanks to them for coming on. Excited to kind of let you get to know them as we go along. Um, if you want to try it out for free, you can have 250 free play coins if you type uh, Toffee's special into their code uh, line. So do check it out. Are you All saying right. Americans can do it too, Toffee's? Yeah, so here's the best part, Zari, right? and I'm going to be... Like, I loved betting before I started casting. Like, that was one of my uh -huh. favorite things to do to make games more fun for me. And I had to stop, right? Because, like, you know, maybe we hear about somebody has a flu or whatever, and it, it feels unfair. Um, but they have a whole play betting site, sort of like play poker, where you get play coins, you can bet them, and then when you have enough, you can enter raffles for free items. Um, so I started doing that, and I actually really enjoy it because it adds a little more fun to sort of watching matches. So uh, I think that's something that we can do here in the States. We can have a good time with it, um, but not feel like we're actually betting real cash so it's yeah. a really fun adoption thing so check it out guys that said the guy who's talking to me the man who's the master of helping with the pitch is none other than my guest andrew campbell Zyori tv you probably know him both ways because he's gone from being a radio personality to a everyday face in the world of dota when he chooses not to disappear for months at a time uh Zyori, how are you how are you doing today I am quite well, man. Uh, we just started the hub stream, so that's always a big sigh of relief. I, I was just saying that like hubs for me are just a uphill climb mm. of stress until the stream actually starts. And then there's this weird magic that happens where once it's online, once we have the schedule, all the documents are out. It's sort of like, you know, everyone knows where they need to be, and now we just need to execute. And that makes the whole thing just a... A, a, a lot more fun for me where I can actually nice. kick back and be talented. So I'm feeling I'm feeling swell, Toffees. How are you, man? How are you hey, doing? I can't complain. I'm here chatting with you. It's nice to be back on the air uh, a little bit. So really, no complaints whatsoever. Uh, I'm excited about watching the qualifiers, which we'll talk about in just a second, because you guys came up with a different way to watch the qualifiers. So uh, first, I want to say thanks for coming on on short notice. Literally, I think I asked you about two or three hours ago, um, Long story short, I saw the hub announcement uh, this morning on Reddit while I was doing my morning reading, if you will, uh, mm -hmm. and I was struck by, besides the crazy Crucible thing, how focused on the fans your uh, your layout seemed to be. Right, so you kind of you sort of I saw that there was the Crucible for like up and coming casters. There was this idea that you would be uh, letting fans see what choose what games are broadcast and sort of you guys do. So they seem like they have a lot of control over that. So I want you to come by and tell me a few things. I think the first is um, why didn't you feed your team for eight hours straight? That's that's really what I got from that announcement <laughs> web page. Um, yeah, Slack's had a lot of fun with that one. That okay. really was <laughs> that was one of those magical moments where, you know, sometimes we just let Slacks run. Right. Mm. And he just says into the group, hey, guys, I finished the caster patch notes and really not having much of an idea what that means. You start reading that document and just go, Jesus Christ, dude, how do you like I, I actually don't know how you come up with this shit and all of it. It, it just seems so, so topical and well placed. And I, I have no words, man. That was just a, a jaw dropper for me. I was going to ask you, actually, my last question was who wrote that release notes because it was entertaining, but it had it had slacks all over it in terms of uh, he is the hardest working crazy person I've ever met in my life in terms of yeah. 
Now, content. I will say it was not all slacks. I know Mott had a hand in it. Gotcha. Um, it was probably like uh, maybe 60, 40, 70, 30 slacks dominated mm. kind of uh, pair programming there. But Mott definitely uh, had a hand in it as well. So credit where credit is due. They did a, a real good job with it. And of course, uh, I think, well, it's public now. Everyone's seen that Mott video. Uh, hopefully y'all enjoyed that. It has a nice little spicy twist at the end. We were worried that perhaps the viewership wasn't there at first because... Um, well, maybe the the payday came too late in the video, but mm. then we realized that it was actually just left unlisted instead of made public by accident. So gotcha. that would explain <clears throat> the lack of views on that one. But anyway, no, it's a really ridiculous video. We have a little more content coming. I don't want to okay. spoil too much, but um, the the Mott video is just the the first of uh, what is more to come. So and a lot you guys to look are gonna, forward. Are all the videos going to be on your YouTube channel for Moon Duck? Yeah, they always end up there eventually. Um, but it'll probably be debuted on stream first, I imagine. But yeah, YouTube is where you'll find that that stuff once it's once it's done past. All right, so you can check it out Moonduck TV over on Twitch or on YouTube. I think it's the same name, right, for the YouTube channel. Yep, YouTube okay. Moonduck. All of it's Moonduck TV, man. We Perfect. did it right when we started. The first thing we did was okay. No one's taking it. We're taking everything. <laughs> so we made Moonduck TV. We took the subreddit. We don't use it, but we've got it, baby. You gotta lock it all in there. You learn from the failures of past like yes. startups because that's, that's you learn from being Zyori Starcraft, Zyori Cast, Zyori TV, Zyori the real Zyori, and you have 15 different accounts and nobody can ever find. It's terrible, Toffees. Mm. It's terrible. You're talking to a guy who just changed his Twitch account, so I totally that's am with you and understand where you're coming from. Okay, so I can vote for what games you or anyone at the hub casts, from what I understand. How does that work, and how do I vote to see which games I want to watch tomorrow? So, not exactly. Okay. Um, the voting is exclusively for the caster crucible. So, ho mm. hopefully that was clear to at least most people. Um, on the mainstream, it's going to be a combination of Dota TV games that we've been assigned by Valve. Uh, gotcha. Probably about 50% of the coverage. Uh, and for the time slots where we don't have any assignments or we have uh, extreme going off-site, uh, where we have a couple people doing efficiency streams for just casting their Valve games. MRP, for example, he's going to be doing some casting. Um, by off-site, I mean we just have a separate internet connection, basically, to make sure everything's fine with running two streams at once. So they're very nearby. Uh, they just uh, have a, a little bit of geographic isol uh, isolation. Um, we're just going to be covering whatever games seem good. Uh, you know, there's yeah. obviously some points, uh, definitely in the playoffs, where we're going to be covering most of the South America playoffs or Moon Duck. I think maybe mm -hmm. all of it is Meat Mott and Trent. Mm -hmm. So the three of us are going to be uh, covering that uh, and having a lot of fun in the offsite location, kind of doing the remote studio thing, nice. um, and then. The people here at the hub are just going to cover wh however the storylines unfold, you know, wh whichever okay. seems like a better game. Probably a lot of EU and NA on that stream, I would imagine. Those seem to be the hottest regions. Uh, C, of course, also up there in the conversation. Yeah. Uh, probably not not as much CIS. Uh, well, actually, very little CIS will be on, on Moonduck 1. Uh, very little South America will be on Moonduck 1. And not that much China either. We have China playoffs, but Chinese group stage uh, will probably not be much on Moonduck 1. So gotcha. because we're kind of limited, you know, we got a smaller talent pool. We are going to do some of the assigned Valve games, which is not completely in our control. Mm -hmm. uh, and we committed to this before we had the Valve schedule. Gotcha. Uh, we can't allow people to choose any game that we cast, but we still wanted to have some kind of interaction. So the Caster Crucible thing seemed like a way to kill two birds with one stone where the community has some control. And if there's a game that people overwhelmingly want covered that isn't really covered or has a tier three caster that is only on Dota TV or something, there's at least somebody casting it. And it's also a way to give some new casters a shot and have some fun as well as let Twitch chat interact with uh, the casting live. So a okay. lot of pieces going into one to make it kind of a cool experience. Nice. Now you brought up something that I did want to address, which was it seems like when you compare, I don't want to compare because they're two very different hub styles, but BTS has a much larger pool of staff uh, and talent that it seems like are there to do this thing. Are you guys still planning on wall-to-wall 24-hour -wall coverage? And do you think that's yep. going to be a struggle because of your staff count? Um, a little bit. I, I will admit we had... Um, Brax is working with us off-site. He's coaching uh, Digital Chaos, so uh, obviously he's not here. Um, so that gives us a little bit less of a person. Although last time he did play and cast as well, so mm -hmm. we also only had half Brax last time, to be perfectly honest. Uh, we had another talent that I, I don't want to call out because it'll make it sound like that he dodged or something, but something came up and he wasn't able to attend kind of last mm -hmm. minute. Uh, so we're short one more person than we would have liked um, and it's definitely tight I would say we're at capacity so to speak we've got uh, most of our time slots filled up with everybody kind of doing maxed out shifts but it's not too bad nobody is doing like hellacious 16 hour shift 8 hours of sleep 
12 hour shift or anything like that by long shift i mean everyone's doing like eight to nine hour shifts which is right. you know still very manageable for a hub like this um so yeah we'll be doing 24 7 coverage we'll have some simultaneous games uh with remote stuff shane i think is going to be doing a lot of his casting off-site okay. just kind of the way the schedule worked out so there's going to be some coverage on twitch.tv slash shane omad with him uh and gareth doing a lot of that then we'll see both of them back here on the main stream excuse me for the playoffs and mm. finals so nice. we're definitely going to keep up uh we have some fun things planned um you know definitely an ulterior kind of coverage style i don't want to sell it short and make it sound like mm. we're only going to mess around but um i think it's probably a slightly different vibe than what bts will put out but who knows i don't know exactly what they have planned either i know they started their stream before ours and they've been <laughs> casting a whole bunch of shit and playing PUBG. that's about all i know so interesting uh we'll see it's that that's what makes this an interesting event right we're competing but I, as to my knowledge at least they don't really know what we're doing so right. we have these two different hubs working completely independently of each other um it, it kind of creates for a cool dynamic i'm excited to see what kind of content uh, they're going to put out you know i didn't get to see too yeah. much of the summit because i was in china so uh, i'm pumped man nice yeah it's, it's like when you get to, uh, competing movie studios that both are producing sort of a similar movie at the same time you end up with armageddon and deep impact uh coming out yep. in the same year uh should be pretty yep. interesting now that said let's uh there's two things one that i thought was interesting you said you're gonna have some interesting new features now crucible was obvious one that i think a lot of people saw less of was you guys are bringing out two programmers, I guess is what I should call them. I don't want to call them coders or not, uh, who are pretty good at what they do. I think Pimp Muckle, known for uh, being the highest profile snub in Dota 2. Uh, I, is there a lot of stuff they're sort of bringing to the stream to differentiate what you guys have been, what we're seeing in other places? Um, yeah, I think so. And I think one of the best examples of this, and hopefully he doesn't mind me referencing this, though, tweets are tweets, right? Mm -hmm. Now that Trump has opened the floodgate for <laughs> an analyzing 140 characters or less, um, but I saw God's tweeting at somebody that what he likes about the layer stuff is that it seems like they're adding features that actually add some value to the Dota viewing experience mm -hmm. where it feels like what, what he said, you know, some other studios have done. And I, I think the obvious uh, target there is PGL mm -hmm. um, or like the battle view was obviously a dud, an example of, hey, this is really cool from a technological production aspect. However, from a viewing perspective, it doesn't really add anything, you know, yeah. showing the, oh, God, we've got all three lanes at once. It's like, ah, that's kind of cool, but it doesn't really change the state of the game, right? But the mm -hmm. net worth bar, whoa, that's actually kind of different. That gives you more information to work with as a viewer. Um, the stuff like showing what's on the courier over the inventory so you can see at all times, oh, they have these items mm -hmm. too, right? That gives you additional information that otherwise wouldn't have been available to you. Um, the new gold breakdown that shows... Uh, like illusions, how much gold mm -hmm. illusions have fed to the enemy team and the breakdown of how much has gone to each hero. Stats that are collected by the game passively, but we don't have easy hotkeyed abilities to just pull up, hey, let's see how much gold this PL has fed in illusions. So that's really that's, cool. That adds legitimate cool. new value that makes you kind of, you know, things that you're curious about. Like, huh, I wonder, mm. in the average 40-minute game, how much gold does PL feed away with his illusions to other heroes? I'm not even sure if I could ballpark it, having never really seen those numbers before. So now, that's the kind of stuff that Lay Earth is adding. And yeah, I, I think it's pretty fucking cool, man. No doubt about it. As a play, So you're a play-by-play -play caster. You, I mean, that's what you sort of built your career on. Is getting tools like that a really... I mean, it seems like it should make your life easier. Do you find it makes your quality of casting life easier to sort of take some of those worries off of the table? You don't have Twitch chat screaming net worth chart or courier loot or whatever because that's now part of the overlay so you can focus on, on the play-by-play? Yeah, I, I, it definitely doesn't hurt, right? I think okay. I feel like as a caster, there's always a lot to talk about, and that's mm. part of the battle of growing your Rolodex of knowledge, right? Like learning new things to talk about or point out, hey, in this five-minute window of the laning phase that I used to think was really dumb and boring, having talked to a whole bunch of 7K support players, mm. I understand now that the warding positions here and like this one counter ward and the implications, and once you start to open the door to that kind of stuff, you could talk for ages just about the warding game in the first 10 minutes Right. of the match and really reference nothing else so this is a good example of these tools take those kind of complex mm. ideas or data that we can't usually visualize in game and plop it into something that um, is a little bit easier to talk about more importantly nice. easier to understand for the audience so it's definitely great to have more visual aids i don't know that it makes a fundamental difference like wow i love casting again it's so <laughs> much easier you know it's it's not really that different but it's definitely a value add you know it's, it's great nice. to have additional things to look at no doubt
All right, so definitely new stuff to look at. Uh, some new faces at the at the hub. Some uh, interesting stuff going on. Yeah, Nahaz. And... Discovered Nahaz. You guys did... coming for the first time. I'm so impressed that you guys discovered him. He's he's been very hard to sort of <laughs> like. I've never seen the guy before, but he seems really smart. So yeah, that no, he's be very cool. <laughs> no, it's gonna be sick, man. He was just in China with us, so we're like nice. fresh on the Nahaz vibe. You know, we got a little mm. bit of you know, the energy going already. I'm I'm pumped. His flight got delayed, unfortunately. I don't think Annie has arrived with him back yet, but. Nahas will be here soon, and he will be basically eating and then getting on camera. So I hope nice. he's ready. <laughs> I'm sure he is. I'm sure he spent, knowing Nahas, he spent most of the delay time going over statistics and patch analysis and all that fun he's stuff. Watching the opens. You know, he wants to yeah. see, the, he, wants, he wants information on the teams that were in the open qualifiers that will be in the regional qualifiers, but we have never heard of before that don't have yeah. statistics. I'm not even joking. Okay. Like 100%. That's what he was doing in the airport, was looking at track Dota that's for those great. games and trying to figure out what the hell is going on in that sect of Dota that isn't well known. That's what he lives for, dude. That whole that's what, concept that's what we need of, like, of identifying new potential Dota prodigies, mm -hmm. that is, that's Nahaz 101, I guess. That's, it is, it, and I think it's something that we need more often at the counters. Now, um, I do want to ask you about, before we run out of time, the big thing that sort of came out of the announcement that I find interesting and I'm curious about is this Crucible idea. Uh, you're basically creating a Battle Royal arena for casters where they get a digital MMR, which Twitch chat ranks them on. If they drop below 3K, they're donezo. If they get above like 6K, they get to cast potentially on the official channel. Um, I, I don't think about tell those me more. specific numbers, but yes. Uh, per personally, I'm not privy to the exact calibration, but you got the general gist of it. The idea mm -hmm. is it combines multiple things. Um, in general, we like to look towards stuff that has um, community engagement for a lot of reasons. One, I won't lie, it is definitely great for sponsors. Sponsors right. love to see engagement and people interacting with things. But more importantly, it gets people invested, right? It gives mm -hmm. people, it's sort of like, it, it It scratches the itch of the betting thing we talked about earlier, where if you've put 50 bucks on a game and Sumail is your shot caller, you're watching that game on the edge of your seat saying, damn it, Sumail, you better kill right. that guy. I've got money on this, right? When you voted on the heroes, when you've participated in some way, it gives you a little bit of that feeling, like you're a little more connected to the event. So we definitely wanted to have some kind of interaction with our hub. So uh, having the community vote on games to be covered seemed like just a, a natural avenue we wanted to pursue. Mm -hmm. Then on the other side, the qualifiers have always been about giving new casters a shot, right? Especially with two more regions. Now we have South America and CIS split out. There are so many games. There are times where there are like eight to ten games going at once when all mm. of the regions overlap. When North America and South America are just starting and Europe and CIS are just finishing and there's that weird little overlap. Yeah. You need a shitload of casters. So there are a lot of casters getting paid good money by Valve to cast in Dota TV on official games where they can now say on their resume, I have been paid by PGL or I guess in the past directly by Valve. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this th these direct funds, I've been hired for a gig to do this. That's a big deal for people yeah. that are in that tier three spot, right? Those little resume builders are what allow you to move into the tier two and eventually into the tier one. So kind of channeling that mindset we thought, well, how can we harness that energy even more? And it's like, well, let's give some of these like open level casters a shot. Shit, let's just make it anybody that wants to go for it. They'll be on Moon Duck. They're guaranteed to have at least whatever, 50 to 100 viewers, right. probably more. I don't know what the minimum is going to be. A lot of this is a big experiment. But mm. once we started mapping it out, it just sort of we set our goals out, and then this seemed to be something that could connect the web a little bit, yeah. um, kind of a cool way. And then we came up with the caster MMR system to make it a little bit more dynamic mm -hmm. um, and also just make it more interesting i don't know add another layer of confusion um so yeah that that's that's kind of it that's that's all the moving pieces that fit together uh we have a team of mods that are going to manage the whole thing so there definitely is a human element it's not just a uh um you know automated system or something like nice. that we'll see how it runs i won't lie there's definitely a chance that Four hours in, it's like Dirt Mall and nobody showed up and it's a fucking cluster and nobody knows what the hell's going on and the mods aren't showing up for duty. Who knows? Hopefully that's not the case. <laughs> you know what? We, we tried. And it's mm. it, ultimately, at the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal if this whole thing doesn't work out. And, you know, maybe there are some downsides. There's certainly a chance that a decent caster could come on or, God forbid, a female caster steps up and mm. she's not that well-practiced and Twitch chat is un unnecessarily brutal and somebody gets upset. 
that might happen. I hope it doesn't, but it certainly could. And I think the opposite it could also be the case where we might find a diamond in the rough. You know, we might find some caster who's actually pretty goddamn good that nobody ever has heard of before that might get a, a couple of highlights on Reddit. So that's where the, you know, if you actually are that diamond in the rough, hell yeah, we want to talk to you on the mainstream. We want to see what the hell's going on. You know, we want to, right. we want to take credit for discovering this this gem, you know. Very nice. uh, just, just kidding. But that's basically the uh, the idea behind the whole thing. You know, hopefully we can kill a few birds with one stone and try something new. That's what it's all about, baby. Okay, so if I'm listening or if you're listening to the show and you think I do want to try this or I've always thought, why not? Where do I go? Uh, how do I sign up and how do I get myself on a cast? Um, hub.moonduck.tv. That gotcha. is the, the best spot. You can find all of the links there. Uh, you can also go to just the Twitch stream. We're live right now on twitch.tv slash moonducktv, and that holds right now and for the next five days because it's a 24-hour stream mm. for the entire hub. So when I say now, I mean literally right now, if you're listening to this before June 30th, um, we are live, and you should go check it out. All the links are below the Twitch stream. You can find the info about the sponsors, which are uh, a loot bet and Discord, and uh, you can also find and all the info about how to vote for matches, uh, what the hell's going on with the Crucible, and uh, anything else. So uh, hub.moonduck.tv, that is our kind of Valve-like patch note subdomain that has everything hub-related. And anybody can do this, right? So like, even if I decided I wanted to do it, I could make like an alter ego and just go on there and cast a game and let people eviscerate me. Like, there's no, there's no rules. Um, basically. Okay. <laughs> So the caster crucible, the, the only rules are uh, use judgment. You want mm. Twitch chat to like you or you're going to get kicked off. So, I mean, obviously there's not a tolerance for like extreme racism or stuff that, you know, if you just come on right. and use a bunch of profanities, there is a mod on duty that has discretion to just be like, dude, I don't know what the hell you thought that was. Get the fuck out of here. You know? Right. So, uh, I, I would say, I would call those common sense rules. Okay. Uh, anything that would get you banned on Twitch will get you banned from this stream obviously because we're streaming on twitch i think that goes without saying so if you can follow the twitch terms of service you know we're probably pretty okay with it it's it's on you man you're stepping up you're popping into the spotlight uh we'll i see well hey you know what anybody who's listening that's thought one of two things if you've ever thought i want to try this and i i would be really cool to get feedback i think that's a cool this would be a fun thing to do and the other group of people are those assholes who do nothing but judge casters because they say it'd be ridiculously easy. Here's a great chance to try it out and see just how easy it actually is. Prove that you deserve to be exactly. the critic. Exactly. Well said, Toffees. So, I mean, said it better, so. Don't, don't bitch about the president if you didn't vote. Don't bitch about a caster unless you've tried to cast before. So here's your chance to do it. Uh, head over to Moonduck and check it out. Um, Zari, I am wicked excited to spend the foreseeable future, the next five days or more, uh, watching the hijinks that you guys have cooked up, as well as the casts. Um, I'm excited mostly about day five when everybody is going completely bat crazy because they've been yeah. up for 24 hours, so at that point, like 72 hours straight. Um, that's always the most fun. Um, that said, I think there's an invite, guys, if you do want to join on the to the Discord on their website. So give us that website one more time, Zari. Hub.moonduck.tv. H U B. Hub. Hub.moonduck.tv. So go check it out. Join the Discord. Get involved with the Moonduck community. Um, as I appreciate you stopping by. Andrew, is there anything else that you want to uh, let us know about before we sign out for the evening? I don't think so, man. Uh, it's always a pleasure. It's uh, fun. Sorry I'm so long winded, Toffees. I feel like we only get through half the questions every time I'm on here. That's my bad, pal. It's all right. It makes it makes more shows for us to see each other in the future. <laughs> that's true. Doubles our that's experience. True. No, so, that's, uh, that's about it. We're looking forward to the hub. Uh, find everything on Twitch, uh, Moonduck TV, Moonduck TV 2, and Shane's channel, Shane O'Mad. That's pretty much uh, excuse me, where uh, all the coverage is going to be. Awesome. Well, check it out, guys. I'm going to say goodbye to Zyori right now. You can find him at Zyori TV over on Twitter. You can find him at Zyori TV over on Twitch. And really, you can just find him at Moonduck lately because it seems like you've sort of become the jack of all trades, uh, yeah. man on the man on the ground or feet on the ground sort of guy. Uh, so definitely check them out. we got a whole weekend of Zyori coming up, so I won't plug that too much more because I feel like uh, we'll all just be hanging out on the stream anyway. So uh, I will see you later this weekend, Andrew. It was wonderful having you stop by. All right. Yeah, you too. See you later, man. Have a good evening. All right, guys. We're going to wrap this up here. And as always, we sort of end the uh, show with chatting a little bit about what's coming tomorrow. And that is going to be a lot of games in a lot of different regions. So the one that I think is my excitement for tomorrow, the one that I want to watch the most, 
Not necessarily because I think it's going to be a huge competitive throwdown, but because I think it's going to be fun to watch is there's a 4.30 in the morning, if you're in the East Coast, a uh, game between Na'Vi and M19. M19 came through the qualifiers. Na'Vi uh, is, you know, a perennial favorite, a, hist a team with a lot of history. Um, and I like watching them because it reminds me of different times. It reminds me of times when I would watch uh, Crystal Maiden and Rubik in every single game. It reminds me of times when Pudge got picked in competitive play. It's just... Oh, I miss those days sometimes. Uh, so that is our chance to get a little bit of nostalgia. The game is overwhelmingly in Navi's favor. However, uh, that's never stopped us before. So I'm going to go ahead and bet on them because it's going to be a fun one to watch. And I think while M19 shows a lot of promise, I don't see them coming out ahead in that match. So uh, that's my game pick for the weekend or for the next two days. We might come back with another game pick later this week, so make sure you check it out. Remember, you can follow us at Coffee with Toffees. Uh, we're 5 Midas Gaming on YouTube. Coffee, W slash Toffees on uh, iPad, or I'm sorry, on the iTunes market, on the and or any downloads so you get Stitcher or on SoundCloud. So any way to listen to this in podcast or YouTube form, you can definitely do that. Thanks for tuning in, guys. And of course, a big shout out uh, to those who make this possible, Asus and uh, Razer for the equipment that we're working on. And of course, a huge shout out to Unicorn.com, a place where you can place real or fake bets. So if you're living in North America like me or you work in the industry, it's a great place to just sort of bet fun money, have a good time, um, and do it in a responsible, uh, functional way. So go check them out. And if you want, you can type in the Zyori special to get yourself a whole hoard of free coins. So check it out, guys. I've enjoyed spending the evening with you. You can see me at Toffee's TV or, well, I'll be hanging out watching uh, streams all weekend, all week long. So hopefully I see you there. Have a wonderful night. And as always, Toffee's out. You can use this promo code Toffee's Gift. If you type Toffee's Gift, you get 250 coins as well.